and a vast majority say that blockchain, your thing, will still be useless in 2019. Is that fair? I think I can certainly understand where those concerns come from. I mean, we're yeah. still very early in the technology. Um, so, and a lot of people will obviously associate Bitcoin with blockchain, which is the underlying technology, which yeah. is understandable. However, the thing that most people fail to realize is obviously that blockchain technology can obviously be applied to many different sectors and many different industries. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm really keen, especially in the UK, I do a lot of work in my Future Economies Research Center, which is a run out of Manchester Metropolitan University. Um, and what we do there is we look at various industries where blockchain is a, is a really good solution to manage lots of things around provenance and trust, scalability, traceability of things like goods, supply chains, um, and really, wherever you've got the potential for mistrust, blockchain can be a potential solution. Okay, the things that make headlines, of course, are the, uh, the alt currencies, uh, the cryptocurrencies. There have been so many. We've seen them rise. We've seen them fall. What happens next? Yeah, that's a, that's a tough one. Um, I think, I think I mean, if you look overall, there's over 2,000 coins in total now. And yeah. if you look at fiat currencies, so the money we use day to day, there's 180 fiat currencies recognized by the United Nations globally, mm. yet there's over 2,000 cryptocurrencies, most of which are trying to be some kind of money replacement. So the general play that I think, or the, the way I perceive it, is that we will have a shakeout phase like we do with any kind of technology, and we're likely to see it coalesce around either one or a handful of winners. Those winners will obviously win big. Mm. Uh, identifying who they're going to be is obviously the challenge, and that's why for most people, they'll probably want to run a portfolio inside the crypto asset space to try and maximize their chances, almost similar to a, a sort of... Uh, leveraged private equity type model where you're running lots of different plays where most will lose but if you get the winner then you win big right so you have to diversify and, and basically spread your bets right correct yes. yeah okay uh, the, the the benefits not rather the, not the benefits but uh, the ones that will succeed you've got yeah. uh, a couple of banks out there big ones as well uh, trying to hook up with very very big and very very established brand names Starbucks for example, yeah. and to issue their own coin. I think uh, you've been quoted uh, saying, that, look, uh, this something similar happened in the 80s, right? Disney World came out with Donald Duck uh, uh, a coinage, or rather uh, notes, yeah. and this is a slightly more advanced uh, form of this. Is that what's going to determine success, that kind of uh, legitimacy conferred upon uh, cryptocurrencies or altcurrencies? Exactly, yeah. I mean, what, we, what we've seen really is the democratization of money. So, you know, if you and I wanted to, we could create a CNBC coin. Uh, within three hours, we could have it up and running. And when we transact with people, we could request that we do it using that particular coin. Yeah. Now, it raises the question, you know, well, will people trust that coin? And they will trust it if they trust your brand and if they trust your products. Oh. So, you know, you mentioned Starbucks before, you know, they've got, you know, over a billion uh, dollars worth of assets on their balance sheet of people who prepaid coffee. Uh, on their charge cards in advance, and that's because they trust the brand, they like the product, and they're confident it will be there. Now, for multinationals to therefore issue their own currencies and request that their consumers purchase in that particular currency is therefore not that outlandish. You know, we live in a, an era where, you know, McDonald's has got a higher credit rating than the country of Ireland. So perhaps with multinationals being what they are, mm. the fact that they are able now digitally and technologically to issue their own currencies and request their consumers to use it yeah. is perhaps not a, a sort of unreasonable thing to think. Maybe not, not so as much fish. in the short term, but yeah. certainly in the medium term for sure. I mean, okay. Facebook coin is the probably the next big wouldn't one. It get, wouldn't it get messy though, every big brand issuing their own currency, digital currency? Yeah. I think it would, and, yeah. and what we're probably likely to see is almost um, almost like groups or alliances coming round around mainstream currencies. So, you know, we've seen JP Morgan issue their JPM coin. Yeah. Um, already, they're, they'll be bringing banks onto their network. They've got, I think they've got 270 signed up um, to their information network at the moment, and all of them will be transferring JPM coin, which is backed by a US dollar, to represent transactions from bank to bank and between permission, other permissioned users. So it's a really, really intelligent play as far as I can see that. And obviously, if that continues to be successful, then um, you know we, we would see the strength of that particular currency rise, and therefore it would obviously help JP Morgan as the issuer of that currency as well.